All right, wife just dropped me off at the Lowell Observatory up here in Flagstaff. I got uh, four hours. They have uh, a bunch of their telescopes open thing tonight. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Quick sandwich. Yeah. All right, I'm really excited about this. Um, every time I come up here, it's either raining, snowing, hazy. None of these telescopes are ever opened. Right now, we're gonna go look into the sun. We're gonna look right up into the sun off of that telescope right over there. All right, so in this building behind me, uh, in this dome which houses this uh, beautiful telescope, this is where the planet Pluto was discovered, right here. It's pretty sweet. Um, so this is the telescope that discovered Pluto. So when do we get planet X? When do we find that? Pretty sweet. I don't know. <laughs> All right, this is a spot that's so exciting. If you've been to the Lowell Observatory, but you haven't been up here since October 5th of, this is 2019, then you haven't seen this yet. I was up here months ago before they were building this, this area right here, this platform with all these telescopes on it. And from six o'clock to nine o'clock tonight, you get to look through all of these telescopes. But um, right here behind me is where the historic Clark Telescope is inside. And tonight, around 8, 8, 8.30ish, they're gonna open that up. It's very fun. And you're gonna be able to look. She told me what nebula I was gonna look into, but I had no idea. And if you're wondering about the big green pass, this is how they know that you paid to get in here. You gotta put this big red sticker on. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Remember to take the big red, I mean the big red. I'm looking at my, the big green sticker off when you go to wash your clothes. Cause the last time I was here, I washed it, destroyed the shirt. Glad I didn't destroy anything else in the laundry. But anyhow, this is the historic Clark telescope. Why is the Clark Telescope so historical? Because from 1961 to 1969, they used this telescope to map out the moon to get ready for their moon landing in 1969. You know, they, they had so much success mapping out the moon with this Clark Telescope behind me that they built another telescope that's on the other side to double up their efforts. I did not know that. Uh, it's off to the side. It's uh, just by where I um, was looking at the sun. And she's like, they built that one and they doubled their efforts from 1961 to 69, mapping out the moon. She gave me a lot of insight that I'm gonna tell you in a little bit, but I'm losing sun. So I wanna take as many pictures, cause it's so beautiful here. Living in Arizona, especially down in the valley, you just don't get to see the change of color. You don't get to see all this color, all this, these changing of leaves. You got different color grass, just all these beautiful colors coming through here. The sun peeking through the trees. It's absolutely beautiful. It's things I miss about living on the East Coast, but I would not trade it. I'm staying in Arizona. Until the Lord calls me home, I'm staying in Arizona. This place is awesome. And in the, I only had to drive two hours and 15 minutes to get here to Flagstaff to see all this beautiful, beautiful color. And then come up here and check out some awesome stars at night.
So that star was called Voltaire. It's the brightest star in that in that area of the sky. Um, and it was, I mean, it's daylight still out here. And when you look through the Clark telescope at that star, which is like the guys say, dozens of light years away, it's just this, it's this bright, they call it like the tail of it. It's just this bright tail that you can see. But when it gets darker, that's gonna be awesome to look at. So I think in about another hour, I'll head up to that spot there and check it out. I really thought I was gonna run out of time. I really didn't think I was gonna get time to film out here because the sun was going down. I was trying to see the sun through that telescope over there and that was really cool. And you could see the, the flare and stuff like that. Um, just a great place and uh right up here if you haven't been here though percival low uh who this you know who who this place is named after and who studied here and who's responsible for this unbelievable observatory in flagstaff the, his mausoleum is up there and he was moved into there i don't i want to say in 1923 1922 1923 they buried him up there so he's buried right next to the uh the clark telescope for the big whitish ball right there and then there are these red cloud bands going basically vertically up and down and on the kind of bottom of the right looking cloud band you'll see a little reddish orange dot that is the great red spot uh, right above it you'll also see a couple of dots above Jupiter that is those are some of Jupiter's largest moons called the Galilean moons um, now because Jupiter is pretty low in the atmosphere our atmosphere can be kind of turbulent. We're looking through a lot of air. So if you give it a good, pretty long look, you'll notice you'll see periods where it looks clearer than others, right? It's when you're hitting nice clear patches of atmosphere. So it might look blurry at first, then you let your eye adjust and hopefully you get a nice view. It's cold up here, it's 59 degrees. <laughs> when I left the valley at around 1.30 this afternoon, it was 89, it's 59 up here right now, and it's uh, about 6.30. I'm out of breath. Well, yeah, it's the altitude, the altitude change is what it's gotta be. We're, we're a little over 7,000 feet up here in Flagstaff, which is a little over 6,000 feet of altitude you gain from uh, Phoenix, so. Yeah, that's why I'm out of breath. <sighs> Look at the spinner around so we can all see it before we flip over. Uh, this guy is known as Ceres. Now, Ceres is basically just another small dwarf body object. It sits basically in the uh, asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And you'll notice at the top here, spinning around towards you guys on my right, there is a kind of icy patch in the center. The other thing is, I'm really stuck up here. Great place to be stuck. They don't open until 10 o'clock, but my wife went to her business meeting, so I have to wait for her to come up here. And I'm always like, well, if something happens, that's a long walk down uh, to the main area. Uh, this next single one, this is Vesta. Vesta is also now a dwarf planet, uh, practically. Uh, but Vesta here is also a kind of asteroid belt object, at least today. Again, at the time of the discovery, 1807, this object was considered to be a planet, again, following the same scrutiny as others. Okay, this is probably the last time I'm gonna film because it's getting really dark, but I just looked at Saturn. Unbelievable. Again, if you haven't been up here to the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, since they opened this new uh, area right here with all these telescopes that are behind me, you need to get up here. Again, it costs you $22 to get in, but that's all day. They have unbelievable things going on, speaking engagements, looking through these uh, unbelievable telescopes. It's a definitely a must do.